Today we're going to talk about some interesting applications of the binomial theorem to counting. The binomial theorem states that if you have variables x and y and you raise x plus y to the n, then its expansion is the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k x to the n minus k y to the k. So that means when we expand on the left hand side we get these terms and the degree of any term is going to be n and the coefficient beside the term x to the n minus k y to the k is precisely n choose k. Now let's actually see why. Typically this is proven using mathematical induction, but I want to give a proof that's more combinatorial. On the left hand side we have n copies of the binomial x plus y, and we're asking what the expansion is. So let's look at what the x to the n minus k y to the k term ought to be. Out of the n binomials that we have on the left side, we'll need to select from each one an x or a y. Now the x to the n minus k y to the k coefficient will be the number of ways we choose k of these to be a y, and then from n minus k of them an x. So we choose k to select a y from when expanding. We have n choices, we're choosing k of them to be y, so there's n choose k ways to do this. So sort of a nice compact reason for why this theorem actually holds. Now let's see some cool applications of it. First we're going to look at this application of summing every third binomial coefficient. How do we get a closed form expression for this? This is actually something that's discussed in a different video, but I want to repeat it here today. So what we're going to do is start with this complex number whose cube is 1 but choose it to be not 1 itself. So then 0 is the cube minus 1, which we can factor thinking about this as a polynomial in zeta. It's going to be zeta minus 1 times the quantity zeta squared plus zeta plus 1. Now since zeta was chosen to not be 1, that means that zeta squared plus zeta is actually 0. Or zeta squared plus zeta plus 1 is actually 0. So we're going to look at substituting values into the binomial theorem in order to get this expression we want. So if we substitute x equals y equals 1, then that'll tell us that 2 to the n, 1 plus 1 to the n, is the sum of all of the binomial coefficients. We get 2022 choose 0 plus 2022 choose 1 plus 2022 choose 2 all the way to 2022 choose 2022. Now we're going to plug in values of x and y using the zeta that we developed earlier. If we substitute 1 plus zeta to the n, where here n again is 2022, then we'll get a similar expansion that we had before. Again, n is 2022. But we'll have this zeta floating around. So we get 2022 choose 0 plus 2022 choose 1 times zeta plus 2022 choose 2 times zeta squared, etc., up to 2022 choose 2022 times zeta raised to the 2022. Okay, cool. Now let's do the same thing, but now with zeta squared substituted in for y instead. We'll get 2022 choose 0 plus 2022 choose 1 times zeta squared, plus 2022 choose 2 now times zeta to the fourth power, because we're squaring zeta squared, etc. all the way to 2022 choose 2022 times zeta to the 4044. Now zeta cubed is 1, so zeta to the fourth is zeta. So if we look at these first three terms in each of these expansions, adding these up we'll notice something interesting happening. Because zeta squared plus zeta plus 1 equals 0, this entire sum right over here, the things beside the 2002 choose 1s, is 0. And similarly, the, the same thing happens with the things beside the 2002 choose 2s. And that'll happen for every term that's not a third term in the binomial expansion. So if we add up the left-hand sides, we get 2 to the n plus 1 plus zeta to the n plus 1 plus zeta squared to the n 
And that sum is going to be 2022 choose 0 three times, plus the second and the third terms will disappear, so we get the next thing being 2022 choose 3, etc. So we'll get the sum of all of the third binomials all multiplied by 3. So if you let s be the sum in question, then 3 times s is precisely 2 to the m plus 1 plus zeta to the m plus 1 plus zeta squared to the m. Now 1 plus zeta is negative zeta squared, and 1 plus zeta squared is negative zeta because 1 plus zeta plus zeta squared was 0. So our sum then is rearranging 2 to the n, which is 2 to the 2022, plus zeta squared to the 2022, plus zeta squared, or zeta itself, to the 2022. So we get zeta to the 2022 plus zeta to the 4044. Those are both 1, because 2022 is multiple of 3. So we get 2000, 2 to the 2022 plus 2 all over 3. A very cool application of plugging in things into the binomial expansion. We can do a similar thing by picking, instead of a number where zeta cubed is 1, a number where zeta to the whatever number you like is 1, a primitive root of unity, to get the sum of every kth binomial coefficient as well. Let's look at another application where we plug in y equals 1, and think about this as a polynomial expansion to get expressions for binomial coefficients that might give us a hint about how to think about things combinatorially in two different ways. So first we'll differentiate the left hand side. We get n times the quantity x plus 1 to the n minus 1. Now differentiating the left hand side would be the same as differentiating the right hand side. Okay, so we'll differentiate the right hand side. The thing is the x to the 0 coefficient goes away. So we're going to be left with n minus k, n choose k, which we can write as n choose n minus k because of the symmetry of binomial coefficients, times x to the n minus k minus 1, because we're differentiating. So our sum only goes to n minus 1 because the nth term in our original thing has a constant term. Now if we plug in x equals 1, this gives us 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 is the sum k equals 0 to n minus 1 of this quantity n minus k times n choose n minus k. So this is an actual combinatorial expression. I wonder if it has a combinatorial interpretation. If you have thoughts about maybe a combinatorial reason that this is true, leave your thoughts in the comments. On the left hand side, it looks like this has something to do with choosing a subset of an n minus one element set and then doing something with the remaining um, element that you have from an n element set. We can do the same thing by differentiating the result we just had again. If we differentiate the result we get, we get n times n minus 1 times x plus 1 raised to the n minus 2 is equal to the same type of thing, the sum k equals 0, and now we'll go to n minus 2 because our constant term drops, of n minus k, n minus k minus 1, n choose k, x to the n minus 2 minus k, which when we plug in 1 as a consequence, we'll see in a second, just record that x to the n minus 2 minus k term there. If we now plug in k, x equals 1, we'll get yet another combinatorial expression. We'll get n times n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 2 is the sum k equals 0 to n minus 2 of n minus k times n minus k minus 1 times n choose n minus k. So this might be yet another combinatorial expression that has some combinatorial interpretation. So differentiating the binomial expansion when we plug in various values, but we'll still have a polynomial or variable in one of the terms, like an x or maybe a y, gives us expressions that might give us tools and ideas for getting other combinatorial interpretations. So leave your thoughts in the comments about these ones and play around plugging in values for x and y to see different kind of combinatorial expressions that you can get involving the binomial theorem.